Hello everyone and welcome back to um, the tutorials with Grasshopper. Um, in this session I will teach you how to do a very basic cotton field calculation using the Docophosphor uh, plugin. Um, so uh, as the first step uh, you have to import the DTM. There are previous um, videos that I published in which you can find this information. And then as a summary, well, you need to import the ASCII or the XYZ file, and you need a file path for that. Then you have to use the grid shift and the grid mesh uh, just to shift all the information, all the coordinates, and then create a mesh. And then you can customize your uh, geometry. You can also reduce the resolution of that geometry or the mesh using the filter. So this is what we got. I will show you quickly how it looks with geometry. It um, has been filtered, so it, the resolution is a bit less. Um, one thing I want to explain in this um, in this tutorial first, I'm gonna create a where I'm gonna make a modification of the surface. This modification can be any sort of modification um, with any with any of the operations. And then I will teach you how to do the cotton field, the calculations, and uh, calculation of the volumes. Volumes. So we have here the information. Let me just grab all these and create. This is the visualizer. So we just create a here this uh, visualizer. Okay. What we have here, what we have here is um relatively flat at um surface. Okay, uh, so you can see the cotton field operations on the surface. So the first thing what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the cotton field in path operation. For that, we need a docophosphor list. Uh, we're gonna make this hidden. Then we're gonna need to build a curve. So we can build this curve using um, different points or Let's say um, a curve. So let's create a curve here, a semicircular curve like this. Okay. So if you go and see from the perspective, the curve is here. Okay. Um, just let me go there. Well, I I wanted a bit. I want a different type of curve. So let me bring here. Let me build it here. And let me make it much, much bigger. This should be fine. Okay, so we go to the perspective. The curve is there. That's a beautiful curve. Okay, so we add it here. We add this curve. And we set this curve. We need just to bring these curves as close as possible to the surface. <clears throat> Perhaps I want to I want to elevate these two like slightly like this. So we have a curve at an angle, as you can see. That's interesting. And I will bring it to the front view or the right view. Sorry. We're gonna bring it as close as possible to the surface, maybe somewhere there. So in the perspective, you see that the curve is almost touching the surface of the ground. Um, so we're going to bring this a little bit now. So once we have the curve, this we need to define the width. So we're going to do these five meters. We're going to define the angles to 30 degrees the left one and 45 degrees, the right one. Then a distance of perhaps 25 meters, just for now, maybe a bit more, 45 meters. So with, once we have done this, we just come with this visualizer and then we just connect here. So you will see here uh, the effects of the of the curve. If that makes sense to you. So it's an inter interesting curve. 
Um, so it would be good if we can bring this point up a little bit. So we have cut and fill, as you can see here. Um, just slightly. That's fine. Okay. So once we have this, let me modify it a little bit. Yeah. So once we have this. We can calculate here quickly the volume of generated by this operation. So we put panel and we just connect to this. So we have 66,000 uh, of cubic meters. Okay, approximately. Now, what we can do is do let's do the simple. We have here one mesh, we have another mesh. Okay, so what we're going to do here is now we're going to compare grids. So we come here, bring this, and we're going to compare the first tocophosphor list against the second tocophosphor list. So this is the first tocophosphor list, correct? And this is our second tocophosphor list. And this error happened because both had know the same resolution so that was a mistake here so what we need to do is use because we use this is just this um cofossal list so we have it has to be the same resolution so we have here different options so we have the panel let me copy this panel so we have here the cut the amount of material that is cut then we will have the fill so we can calculate how much we are gonna compensate. For example, if we want to reduce as, or use the same amount of um, material that we are cutting and uh, to fill it, so we will need to change this, um, let's say, um, curve. And so these these amounts will be equal. So if we reduce, for example, here, um, there is still one hundred ten. Let's reduce a little bit more. So are nearly close. So nearly the same amount of material that we remove is the amount of material we are going to put here. Okay, so this is the balance. This is the difference between both. And we want to reduce this as, as much as possible, zero, right? And we can also create a mesh. So we just grab a grid mesh here. Um, Put it there. Uh, we'll, it will create a mesh that it is completely uh, different to the previous one. So we are gonna show this is the mesh that has been generated. With the absolute amount of material we are gonna cut and we're gonna fill. Um, so it helps us to visualize the operation and also to estimate rapidly the calculation of the amount of material we are removing. Now let's imagine that you want to add another operation here with a point. So what we do, so we need to delete this. Visualization. Well, let's delete it later. We, I will just show you quickly what to do. So what we what we have to do is um, from this information recalculate because we have a mesh recalculate and do the other operation. Let's imagine we're gonna have this uh, filling point. So we have the filling point. Instead of using this information to connect here, we're gonna use this information to connect here. Okay, and we're gonna again create a point. Come, we're gonna use an angle, let's say 45 degrees, and distance perhaps 100 meters. Oh, let's do something more interesting. 150. Here it comes, and we need a point. So the point will be again goes to the top. We put it in the middle. Go to perspective. Uh, we bring it up up to this point. Okay, so we set excuse me set one point 
we set that, that point and if we bring this one here that's that's how it it looks like okay so we need to increase this to a little bit more have a mount a mountain here or a little amount of terrain here and we're gonna reduce our angle okay so we added this okay so that looks interesting okay so now it's what we want to calculate is not this amount as you can see here but is this amount from here so we got the second operation the second list and this is the list that contains both uh, op manipulations or, or operations uh, concatenated and we can add a third one or a fourth one so is in this way we can really compare the original grid or the original terrain with the terrain that has suffered several modifications the first modification the second modification um, and if we now Turn off this uh, preview and turn off this preview. You will see that the estimation is now considered this new new operation there. Now we turn off this. We turn on this, um, and we do this. So that's basically the operations now. Where you can do is just group these, and um, we can put the name. Uh, Bring modeling or oh, sorry manipulation and here we have the visualizer and this is the uh, cotton field cotton field estimates so I hope this helped to um some very quick calculations of your operations and manipulations uh, in Grasshopper. Thank you.